Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give the, the choir, I mean the band players and pickers and the drummer a hand. Amen. We appreciate them, I tell you. Praise God. You know, we got all of us out here, some of us like different music, different kind of music. We try to get a good thing in here. The main thing, though, is praising God and worshiping God. Amen. And uh, I love it when uh, uh, we can get together and jam a little bit and everything. We are talking about something big y'all guys need to listen to that uh, maybe we can get into. And uh, <clears throat> let's just see what the Lord has for us tonight in the Word. Amen. I think Beck turned that uh, air condition up. So hopefully this Word will get us all heated up. Amen. God's an awesome God we serve. And, uh, you know, we got to trust in Him in everything that we do. Everything we do, we got to put Him there because we'll be victorious God talked to us this morning about the victory we'll be victorious <clears throat> if we follow his son Jesus amen I like that statement that old <clears throat> our brother Paul made for him to be down here is Christ but <clears throat> to be up there is gain amen so we get where the Lord's going to be gain and come back with him and dwell down here for eternity after everything's straightened out the way it's supposed to be originally. Amen. <coughs> so I'm looking forward to that. <coughs> Y'all excuse me. B.R. wanted that song that I was playing about to blow the trumpet in Zion. About blowed my trumpets out. <laughs> Amen. You know, we as Christians, <coughs> especially in this day and time, we got to be overcomers. Did you know that? You've decided to follow Jesus. You, you, you made a statement there, and you tell yourself and the flesh and everything else, <coughs> I'm going to be an overcomer, and you got the strength because Jesus in you to be an overcomer Without that strength, you can't be an overcomer. But, but we're overcomers of this world because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Bible says those who endure to the end. So there is a fight and a war going on. It's outside these walls. It's in here, praise God. The enemy hates us, and he's trying to come at each and every one of us to discourage us and tear us down. But God is greater than any demon of hell, amen? And we got to remember that, and we got to stay in God's Word because there's going to be times that you got to quote God's Word to get the victory, amen? And you got to be an overcomer, and you got to stand because he is coming back, praise God. And I want to be ready, don't you? My prayer, a lot of times I pray, God, I want to be worthy to go in the rapture. Hallelujah, praise God. My Bible tells me that we Christians are not accounted to wrath. My Bible tells me we're going to be out of here before that great tribulation starts. Amen. And I believe the Antichrist is alive. Jeanette touched on a little bit this morning. I believe he's alive, and I believe he, but he can't step on the scene until the church is gone. And in Revelation 4, you see it says hereafter. That means the church is gone in heaven to be with the Lord for that seven years, and we will come back with him, hallelujah, to rule and reign and help him get rid of this earth of unrighteousness. Amen? Because it's ever were. And it's getting worse and worse, and the Bible tell, tells us that that's going to happen. Amen. I believe God's word, don't you? I believe every bit of He tells us it's going to happen. You know, it's rough and hard sometimes to look in God's word and see uh, uh, some of the things that we see that's going on, and we know that it's biblical. God told us about it. Amen. But, you know, we'd like to stop some of it. But I believe some of the prophecies being fulfilled, things that's happening now, is of God getting ready for what his plan is. Hallelujah. The Gentiles is going to be gone. The Jews is going to take over and spread the gospel over the world. You know, us Gentiles have been doing it for a long time. It's time to get a little help from me, and we're going to be up there with the Lord. Amen. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Let's look and see what the Lord has for us. Uh, tonight and being uh, an overcomer you know and I want the blessings of God don't you I want I told the Lord when I submitted to him a hundred and ten percent 
I tried to do 97, it didn't work. I tried to do 80, it didn't work. I tried to do 50, it didn't work. You got to give God 100%. You give him 100%, you'll get back more than your expectation can ever imagine. Amen. I'm telling you right now. And these blessings, you know, what is that? Divine favor. I want God in my life with that divine favor in everything I do, everything, every walk that I walk, I want him with me. I like that song. We should have sang it tonight, the guys and, and the ladies was here. I can't even walk without him holding my hand. I want him to hold my hand every day. Amen. Every day, get in his holy word. you got to have strength. You better get in his word. If you're going to be an overcomer during this time that we're in, I tell you, I believe we're in the last days. And if you're going to be an overcomer, you better get in his word every day because you can't get in it today and think you're going to make it to next Sunday. It don't work like that. You got to get in his word. You got to keep it in you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because you don't never know what journey you've got liable to go into as soon as you leave here. But if you got God in that journey, you'll make it through. Amen. Think about it. We got to stand. He wants us to stand. He said to put on the full armor of God and we put on the helmet of salvation. Where is it the devil comes at most people most of the time? Right here in this mind. You put on that helmet, that protects you, amen. The helmet of salvation, you've been saved. You've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, amen. We need to be a proud, proud, proud of that. Let's look at this scripture right here in Revelation. Overcomer, I want to be overcomer. I'm going to be an overcomer. You're going to be an overcomer because of the Lord Jesus Christ, what he has for us. Look here. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in heaven did our lord jesus christ overcome some terrible things yes he did didn't he but he went all the way he was an overcomer in the garden of gethsemane our lord prayed three times lord if you can take this cup from me the man uh, uh the god man started uh, rising up a little bit and if you can take this cup from me take it lord but if not thy will i want to do what you want me to do god and that's why he came upon this earth and he knew it uh, and he went through that suffering for you and i that no other man has ever suffered before our lord went through it he become an overcomer because why he come out of that tomb in three days like he said he would and he sits at the right hand of the Father, and he's interceding uh, for, for you and I. And look at here. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. His throne is going to be this earth and eternity for eternity with him. Hallelujah. My throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Think about it. We got to be overcomers in everything that we do. Amen. When this old flesh rises up sometimes, think about it. You got to be an overcomer. Amen. You got to learn how to handle some of those situations this old flesh wants to get you in sometimes. You got to let the spirit man grab a hold of. Amen. Think about it. That old man wants to rise up sometimes. Be an overcomer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at Revelation 2 7. The word says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give uh, to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Think about it. It's going to be awesome to be with God. It's going to be like a giant, beautiful paradise of, of parks. Think of a beautiful park you like to go to, Yellowstone or, or someplace like that. It's going to be magnificent with our Lord, y'all. It's going to be worth all of the things we go through down here will be worth what we'll receive being with the Lord. And guess what? We don't do it for that reason. We do it because he is a God that redeemed us by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so we are overcomers because of that. How you become an overcomer? Have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that he died on the cross and he was buried and on the third day he arose. You're an overcomer because you're a believer. You are a believer. Hallelujah. That's why we're here tonight to believe uh, uh, what our Lord says in his holy words. And give us strength. Hearing the word gives us faith and strength. Amen. And we need all of that continually. I'll tell you right now, it's a battle every day. The demons of hell is being loosed and you've got to fight every day. That's just the way it is. 
but we're, we're more than conquerors because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And when you get a hold of that in your battle and you realize that and you pray to God and you speak his word, guess what? The enemy's going to leave you. But he's going to leave you like he did Jesus in the wilderness. He left him for a season. Ain't that what it says? So he'll come back some other way. You just be ready. Be ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at here. Let's look a little bit further right here in God's holy word. Overcome, and I give to either the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. In verse 11, the word said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Well, you and I don't have to worry about the second death, amen, because we're children of the king, of the, we're children of the most high. And what is the second death? The second death is uh, we will be raptured out of here and the Lord will take us up and we'll come back with the Lord and, the, and the, uh, we'll ascend down with the Lord and we'll dwell on this earth for a thousand years and we'll help him get rid of this earth of all unrighteousness that's on this earth, okay? And at the end of that thousand years, God himself will come down from the throne and he'll have, uh, uh, he'll be a, it'll be a great white throne judgment. Y'all know what I'm talking about here. Those that's dead and in hell and those bodies that's dead and in the grave that's not saved, but their soul and spirit is in hell, tormented. They'll be raised up before the Lord and they'll be judged before the Lord in a great white throne judgment. And the second death is talking about here is when they'll be cast into hell for eternity. We won't have to face that. Hallelujah. Praise God. We'll be with our king. Think about that. That's awesome. Their names won't be in the book. Let's go right here and look. He that hath an ear, let him uh, hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not uh, be hurt of the second death. Now let's look right here. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches to him. Uh, that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and give him a white stone and in that stone a new name written which is no man knoweth saving he that received it. God's got something for us. Amen. I'll tell you right now. I want to tell you, if you want to get in God's word and get in revelations, I love revelations. The Lord's got me kind of hanging around a little bit and I like that because I can stay in it. I love revelations. But if you're reading study God's word in the fourth chapter it says hereafter that means the churches is raptors in that fourth chapter from there you won't the churches won't be in there until the end part we'll be back with the lord now i want to tell you something you go in chapter 13 and you'll see it say, he's talking to some of the churches said uh, hear what the spirit says to the churches but if you go in chapter 15 it don't say nothing about churches you know why the church ain't there think about it let's go a little bit further right it's good and no man knoweth and the word said, but what which you have already hold fast till I come. But that which you have already hold fast till I come. What have you got? You got salvation, praise God. You got the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, hold on to it. Don't let the enemy steal what's yours. It's yours. Hold on to it. Hallelujah, praise God. You don't want to go back in that world that we come out of. We got to, we're the new creation of God, praise God. When we become a Christian, the old man is dead. I love that song, the old man is dead, Steve. <laughs> you got that drift, didn't you? <laughs> Amen. The old man is dead. And a new man comes out. Amen. Praise God. Now, this new man messes up every now and then, but he gets back on the right course. Amen. We got to stay down that straight and narrow. That's what the Bible says. We got to live a holy life for God. We got to make ourselves dedicated to do the commandments and obey the commandments that God has given us. He's done that for a reason. It's for our benefit. Amen. Think about it. Y'all look right here. But that which he you have already, hold fast till I come. You're a Christian. Hold on to what's yours till he comes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then we'll get a glorified body like God, like Jesus, uh, and we'll have that glorified body, and they want no pain, no sorrow, no tears, and all that stuff's going to be gone out of that body. Amen. Think about it. I'm ready for that, ain't you? Amen. Hallelujah. It said, hold fast till I come. We got to hold on. You know, I, sometimes I find myself waiting on the Lord. Lord, I, I, you know, I got to get back busy here. I got to get doing some things. But sometimes I'm waiting, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm, come on. Let's go, Lord. 
But we got to live life until he comes. Well, he's coming. But we got to be ready. I believe this is a generation I always have. This is a generation I believe is going to see the coming of the Lord. All the generations in the last 2,000 years, look at them. Look what's been going on in the last 100, 150 years. You got cars, TVs, now you got computers, now you got artificial intelligence trying to tell you what to do. Think about it. Man thinks he's smarter than God, he's wrong. He missed it. He's our creator. He's the one who created us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's look right here. But that which you have already hold fast till I come. Hold on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't fall. If you do fall, get back up. Hallelujah. And praise God and worship him. He's coming. Look for him. He's coming. Hallelujah. Look here. He that, there it is again, he that overcometh and keepeth my works and until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Man, that's pretty good. That's, a, that's some awesome power, ain't it? Power over the nations. So we're going to help God, our Lord, rule and reign, and, and, and we're going to have power over nations and do things. We're going to be uh, uh, kings and priests for the Lord. Did you know that? What the Bible says. I believe what he says. Think about it. I'll just be glad to be there. You know, you get that kings and priests and stuff in there, you got some things that you got to deal with. <laughs> but we'll be able to deal with it because we're gods and we'll have the mind of Christ. Amen. We'll be like our heavenly father. He don't make no mistakes. Woo, that's going to be good, isn't it? I'm going to tell you all a mistake I made the other day. I, I will not tell you. We do things wrong sometimes, don't we? It ain't too bad if you think about it, but then again, it might be. My wife might think so. I was out there in the garden, and I was playing in the garden, and I planted three nor rows of corn about for them here down yonder, way on down there. And I, 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 Earl ain't here, is he? No, he ain't here. That's good. And so, he's my buddy. We, we plant the garden together, big old garden, you know. And so then I planted, I'm going to plant some black-eyed peas for my two sisters. They like black-eyed peas. They like peas and snaps and stuff and come down there and pull them. So I planted that row. Well, I was in a hurry, and I was out there working and pushing that plow, and I was getting tired and everything. And then I got some, some okra, and I, I took that okra, and I soaked it in buttermilk, and I had it ready to go planted, okay? So I got to not watching what I was doing, and I had that row of peas open. I hadn't covered it up yet. So I got that okra, and I threw that okra in that row all the way down through yonder, and I got to looking. Man, they black-eyed peas in there with that okra. I got a problem, Lord. I wasn't going to tell nobody until it come up. I was going to say, you, can you imagine that okra and black-eyed peas coming up together? <laughs> what can you do? I just covered it up, and I put it in the Lord's hand. We'll get something out of it anyway. Sometimes we mess up, don't we? But God's a God that loves us. He has mercy and grace for us, doesn't he? Amen. I imagine he got a good one out of that too, B.R. The Lord probably laughed at that too, you know. When I realized what happened, I said, I ain't going to tell nobody. <laughs> we, we mess up sometimes, y'all. But we serve a God that loves us. We're his children. Y'all know that? And we're overcomers because he loves us so much. We mess up, but he still loves us. Think about that. Man, he loves us so much. He sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for you and I. Amen? Think about it. You can probably think about some times that uh, you might have messed up any, uh, every now and then, too. Laughter's good for you, you know. Them beans, that really happened. Let me tell you another good one. One day I pulled in over there at the bungalow. I stayed over there about four years, and the Lord blessed me and shouting over there at Roy and Jeanette's over there in the bungalow. And I pulled in the bungalow. I was real tired, and I was exhausted. I'd been in my job all day, and I, I was talking to Roy on the phone, and I come pulling in the bungalow right there, and I said, Roy. He said, what? Yes. I said, I got to go back over there to, to uh, Michelin Tire and get my phone, man. I left my phone over. He said, oh, no, man, you didn't. I said, yeah, I won't, I'll, I'll see you in a little bit. And I said, Never mind, Roy, don't you tell nobody. Roy, you better not tell nobody. <laughs> I bet he's telling them up there now. You better not tell nobody. <laughs> I 
did it recently too. <laughs> God loves us, don't he? But you know, he likes to laugh too. We love him. We love him and he loves us, praise God. Think about it. Laughter's good for us. But he wants us to be an overcomer, amen? We need to be an overcomer. Sometimes we get in life and things happen that is it's not uh, real funny. It, it, it hurts real bad or whatever. But we got to stand our ground. We got to stand and be an overcomer and know that God is with us. Know that he will never leave us or forsake us, y'all. I imagine some of you can think about the time when you've been going through a hard journey and all of a sudden uh, you had a peace that passed it all understanding. And that peace that passed it all understanding, you as an overcomer, you're a child of the king. He's there. He said he'll never forsake you. He's right there with you. And you had that peace. I've been there at death's door and that peace would be on me. I didn't worry about it because I knew God was with me. I know there's some folks in here who's been in those areas too, and the peace of passes all understanding. They can tell you God was with them. Amen. We're an overcomer because of our King. Think about it. We're an overcomer because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Think about it. Let's go. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him I will give power over the nation. Now, you know, I tell you right now, we as is, is, is the children of the Lord, we need to get in God's word and there's certain things in our youth reach. So, well, I, you you got to obey his commandments. Whatever he says, you got to do them. Amen. And if you mess up, ask him to forgive you and get up and go forward. Amen. What did mom and daddy do when you was learning how to walk? You fell down. Mom and daddy picked you up, brushed you off, and scooted you on your way. So we're our heavenly father. If you fall down, something messes up. Get back up, dust yourself off, say, Lord, I praise your mighty name, and keep going forward with the Lord. You an overcomer in Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at here in First Thessalonians. Let's get in this just a little bit. For the Lord himself uh, shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangels and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Y'all see that? That's the, talking about the rapture. Get your book uh, in First Thessalonians. I, I challenge every one of you this week uh, to go in First Thessalonians 4, 16 and start and go down a few verses and read and study and let it tell you a little bit about the rapture, what's fixing to happen. I believe it. I'll tell you something. I always tell everybody I'm going in the second load, but I'll go in the first. I don't care, but I, 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 the second will be good. It says right there, and with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Our brothers and sisters that's died is out there in the graveyard. Their bodies is there. Their sp spirit and soul is with the Lord. Immediately when you die, you go be with the Lord. Your spirit and soul, the conscience and everything is there with the Lord. But you'll be united with your body and you'll get an immortal body because them bodies are going to come up and go to the Lord. And the Bible says, the next verse you'll see, it talks about, and we who are alive. I meant to put that verse in there. It says we'll be caught, C-A-U-G-H-T, up yonder alive. And I don't know what's going to happen on the way from here to there, but I ain't worried about it. I'm going to be alive. Whatever God wants, I'm going. Amen? Amen, sister. <laughs> I'm going, Amen. The archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Ronnie blowed that trumpet a while ago. Y'all better listen. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. I'm ready, ain't you? Think about it. Let's go a little bit further right here. I, I tell you, First Thessalonians 4, 16, right in that area, get in there and study. It talks about the rapture. The word rapture ain't in the Bible. It's C-A-U-G. It's talking about being called up uh, to be in, uh, with the Lord in the air. It's awesome. Amen. It's awesome. We're going. Hallelujah. Man, it's going to be awesome. Look at here in Revelations 3. We're going to walk with Christ in white robes. Look here. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, uh, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. I want to be worthy, don't you? I want to be worthy to walk with the Lord and be with the Lord. And I want to see him in fellowship with him, bow down to our king and sing praises to him. 
It's going to be awesome, y'all. Look at here. And he that what? Overcometh. Y'all say that word with me. Overcometh. You are an overcomer. Why? Because of the Lord Jesus Christ and your faith in Jesus. But he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Now, if you think you, uh, these uh, skeptics out there think you, uh, I'm just, I ain't going to jump on that, but I read in my Bible and they wrong. I read it. You think you can get saved, once saved, always saved. I don't believe that way. I can show you too many in the Bible that love the Lord and had the anointing of God and they lost it. Uh, and I'll tell you another thing. God is an awesome God. Amen. Praise God. He that overcome it shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book. Now, why would he say that if you can blot the name out of the book of life? Why would he say that? Amen. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. I, 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 my, my prayer is God confess my name before your heavenly father. I want to be there with your word says if I believe that you died on the cross and was buried. My Bible says and believe that you come out of the grave. Thou shalt be saved. If we confess him with our mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. You are saved. Hallelujah. You've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus. Jesus is a Redeemer. Jesus is a Savior. There's no way to get to the Father but through His Son, Jesus. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Word in 22, 18, and 19. There's that book of life again. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Now that's a pretty big curse, ain't it? Well, I'm going to tell you something. You need to look uh, at some of these new, these new age people out there and you look at some of these people that's got other religions and they don't get to God through Jesus. They go around some other way. They ain't getting there. They're not going to get there. They've been see, deceived by the devil. There is some religions out there that's big. They think they're going to heaven. They got so much error in there. They took God's word and tore stuff out and put what they wanted in there. That's right. All you got to read and look. You're a child of the king. You know what the, the word of God says. If any man shall add the, unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. I'll tell you right now, I, can tell you, I could probably tell you two or three right now that took God's word and tore things out of it that they didn't like and put what they like in it. They're going to burn in hell in the plagues that, that's there because of it. It's what the word says. Is that what it says? You add to or take away from God's holy word? Let me tell you something. They... I'm just going to tell you, the Chinese are printing God's Word now. Some of our Bibles are printed uh, in China, but some of the newer Bibles that's coming out of China, they start printing it, and they call Jesus a liar and a murderer and all kind of things. That is the work of the devil and the Antichrist, and they will receive the plagues that God's talking about here. You changing God's Holy Word, you better look out. You better look out, China, and all you other people that's this uh, trying to change God's word because he's real. He's a true living God. If any man shall take away from the works, from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from things which are written in this book. This is the holy word of God. It's his holy word. I believe it from the front to the back. Amen? Let's look right here in uh, the next scripture here in Revelation 3.12. It talks about eternal abiding. Think about it. Eternal. That is a powerful word, y'all. We're going to spend eternal, eternally with the Lord thy God for now on. And those people that 
it comes against God's word and comes against God, they're going to spend eternally in hell from now on. Think about it. And God loves them just like he loves us. Everybody that uh, sees me on the uh, Internet tonight and whatever, you have opportunity to make a decision. You've got to make a decision on this side. It's too late on the other side. You either serve God and believe in his son or you don't. It's your choice. God give you the choice. Nobody else's. He that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go uh, uh, no more out, and I will, uh, I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven uh, uh, from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. I tell you, it's going to be awesome, y'all. It's going to be awesome. God has plans for us, doesn't he? Let's look at Revelations 22, uh, 20. I want to tell you this. The Lord said in his word, he come quickly. You know, I know people say, you know, you go tell people that God's coming back. And they say, oh, I've been saying that for years, thousands of years. I've been, well, I'm telling you right now. He told Noel to build a boat. And it rained, and it was going to rain. And Noel built that boat. But it took a hundred and something years for him to build that boat. That's an awesome boat. But he built it, and it rained. The prophets said that Jesus Christ is coming and going to be the governor, the council of this great creation earth that God has made the world. Did you know our God knows every name of every star that's out there? Billions. Did you know our God knows every individual, billions of his humanity people? He knows your thoughts. He knows everything about you. That's the kind of God we have. And ain't no artificial intelligence going to get nowhere close. Think about it. Let's look at these scriptures right here and see what it says. We got to be overcomers. Jesus said he's coming, and he's coming quickly. It's going to be a twinkle of an eye. I believe all of a sudden we're going to be here. And pow, we're going out there to get in the truck, and we're going, we're going to heaven. It can happen that quick. Tonight it can happen. Amen? So you got to be ready. If you ain't, you ain't going. Look here. He which testified these things says, Surely I come quickly, even so come, Lord Jesus. Are you ready tonight? Beyond a shadow of a doubt, do you know you're ready if Jesus comes? Are you ready? I want to tell you something. In 1 John 5, 5, the Word of God says, He that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus uh, is the Son of God. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is coming, and he's coming quickly. And you got We overcome this world and the things because we believe in his Son, Jesus, by faith. Amen. He which testifies these saints says, Surely I come quickly. Even so, come Lord Jesus. I want to ask you a question tonight. I want everybody to bow your head, please. Can you say that tonight? Come, Lord Jesus, I'm ready to go. If you can't say that tonight and you want to be saved or you want to rededicate your life, uh, I want you to raise your hand because I want to pray for you that you can say that. Amen. And God will come in your heart. He'll forgive you for your sins or whatever you've done. And if, if not, everybody, I'm looking, no hands are up. I'm going to say everybody's ready to go. Praise God. Every head bowed. I want you to stay bowed until I get through with this prayer for the folks on the Internet. Thank you for being with us uh, tonight. I pray the Lord Jesus Christ will bless you abundantly. But I pray if you don't, to those that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I pray that tonight you will ask him to come in your heart and you will ask him to forgive you. And he's a God with mercy and grace, and he'll forgive you if you'll ask him from the heart. He loves you so much. Ask him and believe what the word says. The word says he, he, he died on the cross. The word said they buried him. And the word says on the third day he arose. And if you confess him with your mouth and believe that, the Bible says thou shalt be saved. Confess him. God, forgive me for my sins. Please, God, 
I want to be, uh, I want to be able to go, God, in the rapture. I want to be ready to go in the rapture, and I want to be an overcomer. And tonight, if you want to be an overcomer, ask him in. Every head bowed. God, I pray you bless each and every one here tonight. I pray you're going to help us to be overcomers, God. I pray, God, you'll give us strength like never before, God, to fight against the devils of hell that's out there lurking uh, everywhere to try to help us uh, or try to make us fall. You are God. You are king. You in us. I pray in Jesus' name you give us a power and the strength. You've already done it. Uh, in Acts, we see the power to defeat the enemy and be overcomers, God. Now I'm going to speak a blessing over the people, God, in Numbers 6, 24 through 26. Uh, the Lord bless thee and keep thee.